Hey everyone, it's Brenda here from Survival Crafts. Long time no see. <laughs> Life's been pretty busy for me uh, the last uh, two years. I know about 10 months ago I managed to get one video in and uh, since then I've been uh, pretty much um, full on out. So uh, so has my husband and uh, so we haven't really had much time to do videos. Um, so today I'm uh, putting one together and uh, actually I'm filming several videos. I got some really cool things coming up for you. I finally got a little bit of a breather, um, sort of a forced one. I got an ear infection so I can't really go out and do much of anything and uh, um, most of the day I've been kind of dizzy but uh, now I'm able to sit up and, uh, and uh, kind of focus on things. So. Um, so I've had a few requests. Uh, people have asked me about the um, putting a collar on the beaded hide jacket that um, that I did earlier in the um, in my series. So I'm going to be showing you that today. Um, I don't have a jacket in progress right now, but I do have a hide vest. Um, on that vest, I do not want to put a collar. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a piece of cloth and and show you the process. Um, it's the same on either a vest or a jacket. It's no different. So I'll take you through that later today. But before I get to that, um, I just want to give a shout out to um, Brooks Whipple from, or sorry, Brooke Whipple from uh, Girl in the Woods. And uh, she made me some pretty cool things here. I'll just pull those up and I love these. I wear them all the time. So she made me this uh, lovely pair of, uh, of feather earrings. And then um, <laughs> these are so cool. I have to kind of sort them out again a little bit. Um, but uh, they kind of moved where they shouldn't be, but that's okay. Um, so these cool little, uh, little birds, really nice. So, um, so thanks, Brooke. I uh, really appreciate that a lot. Um, and uh, by the way, I got something cool coming for you. So uh, keep an eye out on your post box. I got some really neat things on their way to you as well. Um, and uh, the other thing I wanted to tell you is that uh, I've been getting a lot of really cool comments on some of my um, uh, my previous videos, and I really appreciate them. Um, what uh, what a lovely group of subscribers I have. I so totally appreciate all of you. I think you're really wonderful. Um, and uh, a few that have uh, made some really, really helpful comments on um, on uh, things that they do. And you can find a couple of those comments on my, um, I think it's Sewing with Buckskin video, uh, that one of the comments was made from a man who refers to himself as uh, an old man from Tennessee, um, which uh, I think that's quite cute. Uh, but he uh, was talking a little bit about some of the, uh, the um, skills that he uses when he's dealing with uh, really hard leathers to make his um, uh, his pistol uh, holsters and things like that. So um, definitely have a quick look at his his comments. It, I think it's really helpful. So uh, thank you uh, for those comments. And then um, I had another subscriber who sent me uh, a message actually on my phone about a week ago, and uh, unfortunately was not able to get back to him. But he managed to track me down by email, and. Um, gave me some lovely compliments about how helpful the videos have been for him. And uh, he very kindly sent me some really beautiful pictures of some of the things that he's made. Now, he has asked me to keep his name uh, private, which I'm going to respect that. Uh, but he has given me permission to show you some of the amazing things that he has done. And uh, I really appreciate um, people sending the pictures to me of uh, the wonderful projects that they have made. And uh, yeah, so keep them coming, keep the comments coming. Anyway, let's have a quick look at those beautiful pictures and then we'll get on to how to put a collar onto the beaded hide jacket.
Okay, so I have to apologize once again. Um, I uh, <laughs> Here it is uh, between Christmas and New Year 2018. So when I filmed my introduction and my exit um, was probably about a month ago. Um, I often film my, uh, my intro and as I call them, my extras um, at the same time. And uh, that way I can have a little bit of consistency. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. Um, so it, it's uh, taken me a while to get to this. Um, life has been screaming busy for us. So um, I'm uh, playing with my brand new camera setup, actually. I feel really lucky. I've been able to... Um, I was given by my husband this uh, great tripod with a boom. So I can actually film uh, more of my uh, projects uh, with you looking uh, si sort of from the same view that I would be. So um, what I'm going to do is I wanted to show you how to add the collar onto my jacket. And what I mentioned in my intro is that my intention was to do that on a, uh, on a vest that I'm trying to complete. But um, I'm not putting a collar on that one, and I don't really want to waste the time. Um, and also, the process of putting the collar on and actually making the collar is very, very simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just grab my, uh, my jacket that everybody comments on, and um, I'll just lay it on my table here. And just give me a moment to... Uh, figure out sort of the best view here. I might have to uh, uh, move out a little bit and this is going to take me a bit of time just to figure all of this out. So, Okay. And I'll move in on the relevant parts. But anyway, so there's the jacket and and there's the collar right here. And the, uh, the easiest way to put a collar onto a jacket or to create, the, let's create the collar first. So if I fold this in the way that it should be sitting, um, pull the other side in so the jacket looks the way that it should, kind of when you're wearing it. And I'll sort out those collars. Um, you'll see some little tape marks here. Um, I uh, used to do my own television show and uh, it was pretty windy out one day so they ended up taping it and it of course um, really uh, stained my uh, my collar but um, I'm actually going to fix that down with beads anyway. Um, okay so that's really how the collar kind of looks and fits and it couldn't be simpler. So I'm going to just simply show you um, on the uh, on the jacket itself, and then I'll get a piece of paper, and we can uh, uh, I can just sort of do a quick little drawing, and uh, and you can see how the process works from there. Okay. So the first thing is is that you need to determine the uh, the width of your collar, and typically the way this jacket is cut is um, just literally straight across the back, and then it comes down at an angle. Uh, on the side there. So you know that your collar is going to go from from here to here. And what you're going to do is measure that. So on this one, we'll take a take a look here. So we've got um, 30 30 and 30 and 30 So roughly roughly from this side to this side is 50 centimeters, okay? And then um, the top one, we can determine how tall we want that to be. And this one I made nine centimeters. And then on the outside edge here, I'm just gonna make sure that you can see that. On the outside edge here, I made that a little bit longer. So that's 13. So really what I did was I, uh, I'll show you on the piece of paper, but really what I did was I, um, I measured across the bottom and then I made myself a little pattern for it, by the way, on a piece of paper. And then I made that side longer. The center was nine, and obviously the opposite side is going to be the same 13, height of 13. And this is not staying on here very well, so bear with me. So then what I do is I'm going to measure along the top of the collar. 
Really simple. So again, we've got 30. And so the top is roughly 60. So along the bottom of the collar, we had from end to end 50 centimeters. The top is 60 centimeters. The, the center height was nine centimeters and each side was 13 centimeters tall. So um, once I have those measurements, I can create a little template for myself. So I'm gonna pause this, uh, I'm gonna go get a piece of paper and then let's take a look at how I would draw that out as a pattern. And then we'll bring this jacket back and talk about how we're gonna sew it on. Okay, so what I have done is um, I have drawn for the bottom of the collar, so this would be 50 centimeters from here to here. Then I would draw out uh, along this line um, another uh, five centimeters from here to here and another five from here to here. Okay, and then I just draw a line straight up, kind of as far as I can. Okay, and then um, I do my nine centimeters from here to here. Okay, and then from from here up to here is 13 centimeters. And then I take this line and I just extend it out to the side. And then you'll see obviously that this is a little bit smaller, so all I do is I just kind of freehand to round the collar out a little bit. Now this was not drawn all that accurate, I'm afraid, but but really that's kind of how I would have done, I did my collar, was just like this. Hopefully that makes sense to you. So, um, so I took my bottom measurement along the neck, which was 50 centimeters. I then measured uh, along the top, which was 60 centimeters, so it, which would include this bend. So it would actually be bent down like that, and that was 60 centimeters. This is nine in the very center, and then from the bottom to the top, I had 13 centimeters on either side. So now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut this, just this shape out, right here, here, all along, up there, and there. So I then have a shape, kinda like, sort of a weird little boat shape with a little bow in the middle. I know it's not that great of a drawing, but um, but hopefully that gives you the idea. So now I would then find the very center of this collar, find the very center of my neckline, and then let's talk about how that gets um, sewn in. Okay, so there's my collar. All right, and so this here, Sorry, this jacket's really heavy and catching on everything at the moment. So this is the inside of my jacket here. And although it would make sense to sew this from the, uh, um, the opposite direction, um, normally we sew from the inside out. But on this one, I wanted the welt on the inside because the collar is going to be folded out. The collar is folded out that way, you see, out towards the outside. And so underneath the collar is where the stitch line can be. And then inside, right here, where people are actually gonna see it, that's where I put the welt. So what I did is I actually folded my collar. So the, the outside touching the inside of the jacket, all right. And then I just placed my welt in there and I just sewed all the way across on that bottom seam line right next to my neckline until I got to the other side here. I flipped it back over 
and then I just trimmed my welt. Now you've seen me do this many times on other videos, so I'm not going to explain about welts and, and how to trim them, but um, mostly I just wanted to cover how to make this, uh, how to make this collar, and I really hope um, that makes it clear for you and that really helps you out uh, to understand it um, better. Um, if not, uh, have no fear, uh, I'm actually uh, very likely going to be making another one of these jackets, a full size. I've, I've got an order. I have somebody who wants to uh, purchase one. So um, I'm going to be making a full size jacket for her this exact same style. So uh, I intend to actually do that on camera. Um, I did that with Wild's jacket, but Wild's jacket was a slightly different pattern. That was the circle pattern. This is actually going to be a very traditional uh, Frontiers pattern that I will be um, that I'll be making. So um, yeah. So if this collar didn't really make all that much sense to you, um, have no fear. I will probably be doing uh, another one fairly soon. So I want to just say Happy New Year to you all um, even though my uh, my video exit will say goodbye to you that was in another time frame I apologize um, but uh, we've got some really really cool things that are coming up I know I have spoken before on my channel that we're going to be doing um, uh, some stuff with uh, soap from the land and we certainly are going to uh, make sure that we get that video out we're, uh, we're just so crazy busy right now um, and then other things that we're going to be doing is um, I actually purchased um, a Gearbox subscription for both my husband and my son. And so they're going to do Gearbox unboxing, unboxings uh, on this channel so you can see what's in the, the monthly subscription. And then they're each going to go off and, uh, and do some testing. So Dave has got uh, many, many years of experience under his belt and he'll give you his honest opinion about the um, uh, the contents of the gearbox. And then Jordan, who um, has much less experience than Dave, although he's still experienced, um, Jordan will also be giving his opinion after testing it too. So you'll get two different view views in uh, in one video um, after the unboxing and how they worked. So you can stay tuned for that. Anyway, um, I guess we will see you in the new year, and uh, I hope your holidays have been fantastic, and uh, I look forward to uh, putting more videos out for you then. Take care. Bye-bye. Well, I hope you found that helpful, and hopefully it's answered a few of your questions about how to create a collar uh, and how to uh, put it on to your vest. Um, by all means, go back and have a look at that video of mine on um, sewing on buckskin and it will give you a variety of different techniques for sewing if you want to learn a little bit more. And if you have any more questions or comments, by all means, go ahead and leave them uh, down below. I do my absolute best to try to get to them. Uh, I don't always seem to see them on my feed for some reason, but uh, the ones that I do see, I make a conscious effort of, uh, of answering them. So. Um, the next video, I'm going to be doing something just a little bit different. Um, I know uh, a while back I had created a video on how to do uh, comfrey salve as well as um, how to do uh, an infused oil. Well, this next video coming up, I'm going to do something just a little bit different. I'm going to teach you how to make uh, a comfrey gel. And yeah, I know I'm kind of on this comfrey kick for some reason. I've um, I just harvested the uh, the last of my uh, fall comfrey um, to uh, put the plant to bed for the winter, and I've got all kinds of comfrey around. And um, uh, comfrey is super helpful in so many uh, different uh, for so many different uh, illnesses and uh, and injuries and whatnot. So um, I'm going to show you how to actually make a comfrey gel, and I'm going to show you two different methods uh, how to uh, how we uh, would would make that happen. Um, so. I'm going to be using uh, one fairly natural material and then another one that I haven't really worked with before, but from my understanding, it makes a really, really good gel. Um, so that uh, is the next video I have coming up. If you like these videos, and I promise I will do my absolute best um, not to be quite so busy so I can uh, work on doing some more YouTube stuff, um, this channel and actually my other channel, I, uh, I intend to do some more filming um, 
quite a bit over the next little while if I possibly can get to get the time to do so. Um, but if you like what we do, by all means, please uh, give us a thumbs up. So um, like us, uh, subscribe, uh, please share with your friends. It's always great when we can share uh, the knowledge around uh, many different people so we can all learn from each other. Anyway, until the next time, have a great day, night, week, whatever, and we'll see you later.